It's time for the Sunday Roundtable. Joining us this morning, Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Lizzie Guyton. Thank you both for being here this morning. All right, you heard what Deb Goldberg had to say about the tax rebates, the future of that law, Chapter 62F. Um, what do you think will happen in 2023? Marianne, let's start with you. Democrats, of course, still have full control. Will they touch that third rail and change that tax rebate law? So who knows? They could. But the thing that jumped out at me about Deb Goldberg's interview is the rainy day fund that is only for rainy days. So to me, that was the message she was sending everybody at the state house today is don't touch the rainy day fund. Don't think that's going to be the piggy bank to solve your problems. Lizzie, you know, Governor Baker worked hard to build that back up. What do you think will happen to, to the rainy day fund and to Chapter 62F? Well, Beacon Hill Democrats love to raise taxes, and we just heard the treasurer also say that she's going to be taking her own pay increase. I think they need to honor the law in the books for 62F and give these tax rebates back to voters. All right. Maura Healy wants to cut taxes, though. We'll see if she does. <laughs> Boston Mayor Michelle Wu, she will deliver her first State of the City address this week. Now, her proposal to bring back a form of rent control has been certainly making the rounds, getting a lot of talk. Is this the issue she really wants out there right now? Lizzie, let's start with you. The thing with the housing crisis is there's a lack of it, and it's not affordable. I think there's a lot of opinions about rent control, but in general, there's a consensus that it actually leads to rent increases, and it also can de decrease development. I think it would be nice to see the mayor focus on more common sense solutions that can actually get more housing stock out there for uh, Boston. That's the criticism, Marianne, is that developers won't want to build more housing if rent control is instituted. They're not doing it now. Who's approving anything? They won't approve anything near a, a T station or anything else. This is the cheapest way to keep people in their homes, so you're not making that problem worse because it is so hard to get things cited, so hard to get things approved, so hard to get developments or housing stock built anywhere. If people are out of their homes because they can't afford the rent, that makes the the problem worse. Well, the argument on the inverse is that two of the most expensive cities in the country, New York and San Francisco, mm -hmm. have rent control in the books, and critics of it would say it doesn't work. Well, the other thing here is, again, it's housing stock. So house, housing sales dropped 17% in this country this year, and that is huge. So there's not enough stock on there, and there's not enough being developed. Developers always find a reason not to do it. All right, let's talk about the Cape Bridges. The states <laughs> asked for $2 billion in federal funds to replace them, rejected earlier this month. This is the bluest of blue states. We had full Democratic control down in Washington. Richie Neal from Western Mass is chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, plus a president uh, who waxes poetic about those drives up I-95 with his kids in the back seat of the station wagon to cross these very bridges to board that Nantucket Ferry every Thanksgiving. So who dropped the ball? Lizzie, let's start with you. These are federal assets. They've been in long need of repair. I think it's really unfortunate that with a completely Democratic delegation that this hasn't gotten over the finish line. But I also think it just points to the fact that this system in Washington is broken on getting these uh, these grants and this money approved. and. They, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Maura Haley to also get in there. Do you think, did MassDOT pony up enough money? Was that also a shortcoming here, do you think? Well, remember, this is also the Army Corps of Engineers. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen on this one, um, a lot of technicalities. But, you know, people don't care about that. The bridges need to be repaired. The funding is out there, and now we have to find a path to get it done. All right, Marianne, whose fault was this? Everybody's. I mean, start with the Baker administration under Mass DOT. It wasn't just the funding. It was the design. They, they rejected the design twice, number one. Number two... If Bill Delahunt was still in the delegation and Ted Kennedy was still on this earth, I kind of got to believe that not only would there be money, the design would have gotten fixed too. So everybody needs to get back on board and fix it. All right. Well, let's stay on the Cape with the Steamship Authority. On the first day of public bookings for ferries to Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket, the website crashed, much like it did in past years. So what is the deal here? Is this dysfunction? This is what you get with monopolies, Marianne? Well, it's like Taylor Swift and Ticketmaster, right? <laughs> Every year, all these people are like hovering over their keyboards for five, six hours that they're never going to get back at the end of their life. There are only two ways to get to Nantucket, a boat or a plane, and they know it. So until people really call into question the Steamship Authority, it is not going to change. And this, between this and the bridges, honestly, we need more ferries, we need trains, we need more everything to get to the Cape. So who's got to call that into question, the legislature? Well, I mean, I think that's part of it. And if you're part of the, the committees on transportation, if you're part of the DPU who oversees all this stuff, you've got to be on them. But more than anything, it's all the people who are trying to get reservations should be screaming bloody murder. Lizzie, I mean, is that the answer? Yeah, well, look, there's not any state jurisdiction right now over the Steamship Authority. So, you know, competition is always a good thing. So if that's something that folks want to take a look at, I'm not necessarily convinced that the state, you know, running ferries is going to solve this problem. But competition is always 
is good. They're not currently part of the question, and it's definitely something that needs to be talked about because Marianne's right. There's really limited options yeah. to get to the islands. Okay. All right, to Washington now, where the Biden documents debacle continues to play out. The White House playing defense. While the Kevin McCarthy-led House loads up committees with some pretty hard right members, especially the Oversight Committee. In the meantime, we've hit the debt ceiling. The market's kind of moving along at a ho-hum pace. They haven't kind of reacted necessarily to that yet. But Marianne, what's the end game here? Well, the game is hypocrisy and the outcome is catastrophe. Those are your choices here. I mean, the fact is, Biden didn't do any of the things that Donald Trump did. Remember, Donald Trump held on to 15 boxes plus of documents, ignored a subpoena from a, from a, a federal agency. Then a federal judge approved a search warrant being executed, found 15 boxes and perhaps more. So the reality here is if the Republicans want to hold our economy hostage and not raise the, the debt, not only will it be catastrophic for the United States and the world, they'll lose the White House, the Senate, in the House in 2024. So Lizzie, how does this get solved? Well, it appears that Biden did do something that Trump did with these documents that are now being discovered left and right. I think it's a huge problem for the Biden presidency. Um, this is now a credibility issue, and he went out of his way, and so did Democrats, to you know really hammer Trump on being irresponsible with his document retention, which is fair. Um, and now you know this is playing right into Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans' goals to break, make this an oversight issue. It's honestly also unfortunate because now voters are not going to hear about a lot of other issues that they're dealing with, with inflation, with taxes, with all these local issues, because Washington's going to be fighting about this. Yeah, it's wait, been drip, drip, drip. It has been drip, drip, drip. But on the debt ceiling, do some moderate Republicans cross and hold hands with Democrats to get something done here? I mean, $31 trillion debt. I mean, at some point, there's going to have to be a conversation about wow. spending in D.C. And, you know, the margins are really small oh for McCarthy God. right now. Um, we'll see how they hold. I mean, look, the reality is every Republican president shattered the debt shattered the deficit, exploded it, Trump was the worst. Every Democratic president, including Biden, eliminated it or cut it in half, and they didn't say boo about that or the documents are hypocrites. I think we can agree that spending has been a problem on both mm -hmm. sides of the aisle in no. Washington.